Yesterday I ran the boys through the chute here to get their final weights before they go off to harvest and that was sort of the last job that I was waiting to do with this chute before I can tear the old one out and start putting the new one in. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. If you've been following the channel, then you probably have some sort of an idea of what I'm up against to change these shoots out. But if you're just new, or if you need to be reminded of kind of what all is in front of us here, let me just give you a quick summary of everything that I've got to do to get the AeroQuip shoot in here. First thing, pick up the old shoot, get it out of here. This is gonna require me to take down these portable panels here, and I'm thinking I might have to take this lever off because it's gonna be sticking right like into my back while I'm carrying this thing. Uh, so we'll do that first. After that, I need to cut my alleyway back a little bit to accommodate the new longer chute. And I need to extend my concrete slab here so that I can put my load bars under the new longer chute. I'm really unsure how long this is all going to take me to do. It could be a few days. It could be a few weeks. I'm just not, I'm not sure. So instead of just uh, sending this old chute down the road, I need to set it up over in front of the loading alley. Just in case we do have a cow that needs some help calving or something like that because we are probably a couple weeks away from calves, um, then I will have a backup chute to use while I'm getting the new one in place. Let's get one last good look at this working setup because it's never gonna look like this again. Let's get to work. Body squeeze lever is pretty easy to get off. It's just these three bolts here. Um, but before we take these out, we need to secure the body squeeze panel so they don't just fall out, you know, and smash us. And even though with the body squeeze closed, this handle is pointing down more. I, I still think it would interfere with the tractor, so it's just honestly just smart to get it out of the way. Look, that nut wasn't even tight. Hopefully it's not tight. Oh, but it's spinning because it's not a carriage bolt. Tyler, I guess there's really only one way I'm going to get this. trick is only stepping on parts that don't move because a lot of things up here don't move but some things do which way is it gonna fall out why did i put a carriage bolt down low where it's easy to get to instead of up top where it's hard to get to i don't have an answer With the handle removed, we should have plenty of room to get under here with the forks and pick this thing up. And some people might be wondering, why am I not lifting it from the top with the loader? 
Well, it's because we've got a wire right above us here. So it's a lot safer and easier to just get in here with some three point forks to pick this thing up. But before we do that, there's two more things that need to happen. I need to unbolt the chute from the load bars and then I need to make sure that the wires for the load bars are out of the way because the best way to ruin a scale or ruin load bars is to pinch wires. So we wanna make sure we don't do that. Kinda funny how things work. It wasn't that long ago I was putting these in. Oh boy, I got them tight, didn't I, Billy? Watch out. Maybe a breaker bar will make this a little more pleasant. Well, so far so good. I think we can get the forks underneath here and then I want to like strap the chute to the the pallet forks so because I don't honestly really know what's going to happen when I try to pick it up if it's going to want to tilt or fall or whatever and I mean if it falls away from me fine but I certainly don't want it falling back towards the tractor so we'll try to get this thing secured on the forks before I start lifting on it and you know see what happens I think I've got the chute balanced on there pretty good. I, I figure the front is a little bit heavier because of the additional weight from the head gate. So I've got the tractor a little bit towards the front, but more or less in the middle. The difficult thing about three point forks is the tilt on them. So I'm having to constantly adjust that on the top length, but I think I've got it where I want it. Of course, the tractor is not sitting flat right now. So it might be leaning towards me a little bit once we pull up out of this hole. At any rate, I think I can get some straps on this thing and tie it down, and then we should be able to attempt to lift it up and pull it out of there. The best way to do this is to put the straps, put the straps high up here on the frame so that they have the most leverage. In other words, if that chute's wanting to fall that way, the straps are a lot stronger holding it up here than say down here, the chute would have more leverage on them and be more likely to be able to break them. And we don't want that. I think we can just hook to the end of my homemade pallet forks like that. Tighten them down. having the chute tip off backwards, while it's not life-threatening, it's not preferred either. So we'll put a strap up here as well. I think I've got it about where I want it here. There's a, a gap obviously between the chute and the alley. And I'm doing this intentionally because I'm gonna use panels to continue the alley out to the chute so that I don't have to 
mess up my little dirt ramp that I use for getting them up into the trailer. So they will have to step over that ramp, which is not a big deal. Um, and that, that just kind of makes this a less like permanent kind of install. I am encountering a problem though, somehow, some way, probably because the tractor was not flat when we picked it up. Now it's not wanting to set anything down flat. And also the handle here for the head gate is gonna hit the tire if I lower it down anymore. So my plan is to see if I can lift this up a little bit open the head gate to get this handle out of the way so that it's not interfering with the tire and then see if I can set this down a little bit, just get some of the weight off of it so that I can readjust the top link and finally get free off of this thing. I need to get the weight off of that top link so that I can extend it and just kind of slowly uh, continue to lengthen it until it'll set the chute down flat enough to pull off of it. It's, it's kind of a pain. It's gonna take some time, but it's what we gotta do. I think we're free now. Let me get these straps off and see if I can get the tractor off of here. I was kind of afraid of that. The forks are a little bit too thick and the feet on the chute are not actually on the ground. They're still resting on the forks even though the forks are all the way down. So I have two choices. I can either put some blocks under the chute and then pull out that way or I could just unhook the forks from the tractor and leave the forks on there. I don't really like that idea. I'm gonna see if I can find some small blocks to put underneath here, and then we'll see if we can finally get this chute off of here. Goodness sakes, this is taking forever. I got an idea. This, this might work. Well, we finally got free of this thing. So now if I need to use it, eh, I'll probably just do this anyway so that it is ready to go in the event of an emergency. But I can come back here. There's a little hook here so I could just lift the front up, pull this pipe out, set it down flat on the ground, and then it's ready to go. Uh, there's no sense in doing that right this second because I don't even have panels leading up to it. But when I get those set up, I'll do that. And yeah, so. This thing can sit here for a little while. Sure looks different. I think the next thing I wanna do here is get these load bars removed. And when I anchored them into the concrete, just because of my short drill bit, I had to put the anchors in on kind of an angle. And the reason why that's important is because I can't just take the nuts off of the anchors and lift these straight up because the anchors are angled outwards. So what I'm gonna have to do is get a grinder and cut the anchors off and then hopefully I can get the load bars off that way. You can see on the rear load bar here how much dirt is back here in between the ramp and the load bar. This, this was a really bad design actually that I did. Um, you're just kind of asking for trouble getting all the dirt jammed up in these load cells. It's uh, not, a, not a way to make an accurate scale, I guess you would say. All right, that wasn't too bad. Out of the woods yet, are we? Yes. 
And one more thing I want to try to get done today is I need to cut these little stub pipes off of the post here. The air equipped chute is long enough that it will fill in the gap that these were sort of blocking off. So not only will I not need them, but they'll actually be in the way. So we got to cut all these off. I brought the bandsaw over. I think it'll make short work of these. We shall see. So I think if I hold the saw upside down like this, as uncomfortable as it is, I can actually get a flush cut this way. So I'm gonna try it, see if it works. Well, we're moving right along and you know things things are looking much different than they did when we started but i think that's as much as i'm going to get done today so we'll pick this up tomorrow i'm back working on the shoot upgrade alleyway modificate what i don't know what we're calling this project i think the next thing that needs to be done is i need to cut the alleyway where it needs to be cut so I'm, I'm hoping this afternoon I have enough time to at least take some measurements and figure out where this is going to have to happen and then kind of come up with a game plan as to how I'm going to do it. So the first thing we need to figure out is how long this thing is. I mean, I kind of roughly know what it is, but when I'm cutting the alleyway, I, I really want these tolerances to be pretty tight. So we, we need to get a good measurement on this shoot. Now, it shouldn't fall off to the very leading edge of the chute is about 129 and a half. So for measuring purposes, we're gonna use 130 inches. That's 130 to the very front of the frame here. I'm not taking into account the head holder, which does stick out a little bit beyond that. The head holder only interferes on this side not on this side. And it's more critical on this side because it has to butt right up against a post. That'll work. We got 130 exactly, right? So if, if I was to cut it here, I would have a half an inch of wiggle room to get the shoot in here. And, you know, a half inch just probably not gonna be quite enough. So I gotta decide, I, it, two or three inches, I think will give me enough room to get the shoot into place. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with about two inches. Yeah, that doesn't seem like enough. Because in the front, it'd be nice to have probably two inches and in the back. So let's go four inches. That changed quickly, didn't it? One, two, three. So at 32 inches back from that post is where we'll cut. Another thing that I'm thinking about, and you know, this is, I, I get accused of overthinking a lot and people that do that are not wrong. I do. Uh, but it's because, you know, stuff like this, you really only get one chance to get it right. And granted, I built this entire thing, so if I mess it up, I'm sure that I can figure out a way to fix it. But I would rather not mess up. I would rather just do it the right the first time. So as I'm looking at this, I want my alleyway basically to end right at the edge of this flat bar. This is just my straight edge that I'm using so that I can ensure I make a straight line from top to bottom. But I started thinking about, well, two things. One, if it ends right here, I think we're close enough to this post that we don't need another post here because these, these are only, what, what will they end up being? A little over two feet. I don't think the cows can get enough leverage right here to spread these open. And I will still like marry them across the top like I've done here already. What I'm getting around to saying is since there will not be a post here to terminate these ends into, the question is what will there be? Because we don't want open ends. Obviously that's just gonna become wasp habitat. You've got this sheeting here that, that needs something to go into. So what I think I should do is 
if I want the alleyway to end here, then I should actually cut it two inches back, knowing that I'll come in here with a vertical piece of two by two square that will come up against all of these open ends. We'll weld that on to plug all the ends, give the sheet metal somewhere to weld to, and then also give ourselves somewhere to weld a strut or you know a brace going across here. So I think I need to make another line two inches back is what I'm trying to say. Actual cut should be here. Another issue has popped up in my mind, and that is how am I going to cut these? Uh, the, the easiest way that I can think of to do it is just to use the porta band and chop right through them. Trying to use a sawzall on something like this, eh, it seems pretty tough to get it very straight. Um, the issue with the porta band, though, is with the sheet metal here, how are you going to get the porta band in? And also, if we're gonna cut the square tubing here and then put a piece of square tubing on the end, then we actually want the sheet metal to be another inch, inch and a half longer than this square tubing so that there is some sheet metal to weld to the new piece of square tubing. So I've decided that the best way to do this is to just go around with a grinder and a cutoff wheel cut all the welds that are holding this piece of sheet metal on, fold it in, and then I will have enough room to get my bandsaw in there. What I've got to do now is just go through and figure out where all the little tack welds are. There's a bunch here on the top that are easy to see, but then these ones that are down here in the valleys are a little bit tougher to, uh, to find. Another one here. There. Here. Pipe, square, and I gotta get underneath there to get the next one. Put all these weeds in here, and of course all I got is a flat nose shovel, and it's really not what I want to be doing this. I meant to bring a framing square, and it would have been perfect for this, but I didn't. That's all right, that'll get us close. Well, I feel pretty good about where I've got all my marks for my cuts. I've been thinking about this, trying to, you know, if I've missed something or if this is gonna work, and I think it is. So the next, stage I guess is I'll I kind of start breaking it down into what I'm going to have to do and what order is best to do it and it looks like the first thing that I'm going to have to do is just cut this catwalk off because it's really going to be in the way for everything else that I have to do on this side of the alley so I think when I am able to get back over here with all my cutting tools that the catwalk will be the first to go and then I think I'll bring my torch as well because a lot of this stuff I can just kind of rough cut and you know just get it into smaller pieces to make it easier to remove and the torch would probably be the fastest way to get through all that when I start getting into the precision cuts that's when I need to use some other other things but the torch will be good on a lot of this stuff and another thing I'm thinking about is maybe instead of cutting the catwalk right here even with the alleyway maybe i should take it back a little bit more and then make a couple stairs here on the end i've i've thought about doing this for a while uh, because it is kind of a pain to jump up and down from this thing because it's like it's short enough that you can step onto it but it's tall enough where you just don't really like to so two or yeah probably not there's probably not even room for three stairs probably just two stairs is all that you would need. And it's like you hate to keep snowballing onto the project, but shoot, now's the time to do it. If I don't do it now, I probably never will. And honestly, I think cutting the catwalk is gonna be the easy part of all of this. What I'm really stressing about is what I'm gonna do with the old concrete slab here. It is unlevel and just in terrible shape. I would like to fix it up. It's another one of those things, if I don't do it now, it'll never get done. And it kind of needs to get done to really get this shoot setting right. 
Uh, so doing that, getting this old ramp out of here, it, that's going to be kind of a nightmare. But just one thing at a time. Let's worry about the catwalk first, and then we can move on to bigger problems. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. <laughs>